Why are you taking those down? Give them back to me. Give them. Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video, we are going straight to the to the top of a list of places I cover stories from, or at least like very close. It's got to be at this stage, and that's Michigan. Let me ask you something. What would you do for an Xbox? Probably, uh, you know, hand over a couple hundred books, but in this one, uh, well, a little bit more than that. Some people are mad about it though, you're just so mad about it that when they start, you know, talking, maybe talking a little shite somebody online, they start talking about something else. Like maybe, just maybe, could you help me out on a little, like, something, something? Just take a second. Something along those lines anyway, it'll make more sense when I tell you this story, so let's give it a go. So we're going straight to the township of Colon. Colon? Pfft, whatever it's called. Colon Township. Okay, no, Colon. All right, well, we'll keep this serious. Colon, anyway, it's in the ass end of Michigan. Sorry, I... Just let me have that one. And what can I say, you know, about good old Colon that hasn't been said before? Literally anything. It has a population of about three and a half thousand. Was named Colon because apparently uh, when naming the town, folk pulled out a dictionary and the first thing they saw was a colon. What kind of dictionary did they have? Okay, stop. Me. There are tree lakes in the area, one called Long, cause, well, you know. Another called Sturgeon, <laughs> no idea why. And a turd in Colon, uh, called Palmer, and I, I genuinely have no idea. Okay, I really should stop making fun of the places I talk about. Anyway, okay, let's move on. In Colon Township lived human beings, and some of them went by the surname Macomb. Specifically, Therese and Larry. And Therese and Larry had a daughter, a daughter named Venus. She was the youngest. And Venus was married to a guy named Doug Stewart. Dougie Stu, I like to call him. Doug and Venus had been married for roughly eight years in 2010. They married an entire four days after their first date. I think it takes more time than that for a Big Mac to move through your Colon Township. This was a uh, big surprise to her parents, but hey, not really much she can do about it now, so just launch it. Doug actually got on really well with Venus's older brother, Dustin. They would go out hunting and fishing, all that jazz together, so that's something. Venus, she worked in a bank. She had a degree in criminal justice. She actually studied that because she wanted to become a cop, funnily enough. She later found out she hated guns, so that put an end to that. Doug had been a Marine, leaving for his wife. Venus, she didn't want her husband, you know, running towards the gunfire. And after leaving the service, Doug went on to work in the fast food industry. After being married for a year, Baba number one arrived, followed a couple of years after by numero two, also a girl. Not long after, Doug packed it in. You know, Venus, she earned more working at a bank, so Daddy Doug became Daddy O Doug. He'd raise his two girls, chill, and he was actually, get a load of this. What are the odds that a guy in his late 20s would be crazy about Xbox? He became quite addicted to it, especially Xbox Live, COD. Call of Duty. He was a little immature, and he wouldn't get off the darn thing. So after time, what happened time and time again happened this time. Doug and Venus would separate. Venus actually wanted to get the heck out of Michigan. She wanted to start fresh and well. Hey, let's give the marriage one more try. They eventually moved to a place called Newport News, Virginia. Doug, he went back to work. He, got, he, he was a truck driver. And usually, you know, most people are kind of full of shit when they say, let's start again fresh, but this time it was actually legit. Things were better than ever, until they weren't. Of course not. After living in Newport News for roughly a year, Doug got some news himself. Venus was up and at him, taking the kids back to Michigan. 
She actually just left in the middle of the night. Doug tried to call her, nothing, nothing, nothing. He actually went to report her missing. Until the police said, yeah, she's been here and she's gone. In February 2010, she moved back to Colon Township to her parents' house. Doug was to stay in Virginia. And that, as they say, was that. Dougie Stu, smell you later. On the 26th of April, 2010, Venus and her two daughters were getting up, groggily up, you know, for another Monday morning. Monday again. Therese was already at work, Larry was sawing wood, and Venus was packing lunch for her girls. Larry then began to be, you know, uh, rudely, if you ask me, awoken by Venus's two daughters. They were yelling and shit, just, they were just playing. So he got up, went downstairs, and was like, where's your mother? He found her purse, he found her keys, he just didn't find her. Her car was still there. The two girls had no idea. He walked around the house, he looked through the garden, everywhere, and she was nowhere to be found. One thing he did notice, though, was that on the gravel, on the drive, it was all messed up. Like there had been a, a struggle, someone was bracing their feet and that sort of stuff. Nobody heard anything though, she just vanished. Also on the ground was a pink hair tie and the packaging of a blue tarp. But no blue tarp. It was then that Larry called 911. She's just not there? Yeah, is there a vehicle here. missing or anything? No, vehicle is here. Her kids are here, and she is gone. Okay. Have you tried calling her or anything? Yeah, we can't get hold of her. The police arrived and started going through the scene. On the packaging, they discovered a fingerprint, but it would take them a while to determine whose it was. And the first thing Larry said to them was, a few days prior to the 26th of April, dun 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 dun, dun Venus had gained full custody of their children. Missing woman mystery in St. Joseph County continuing at this hour. Venus Stewart disappeared Monday, evidence of a struggle on the scene, but no one has seen her since. We've been on top of Venus Stewart's disappearance for days now, and today, 24 hour news aides Jessica Leffler was there as police searched for clues. Now, Doug, of course, he still lived in Virginia, which is a bit of a trek away. So police were calling, calling, calling Doug all day, finally getting true to him that night. And where, oh, where were you today? He was at Newport News all day. He was a few blocks from his place, and he gave the police a full itinerary of when and where he had been all day, and he never left. They followed up with this, spoke with people at the places he had been, and... Yeah, he had been in Newport News. Witnesses, CCTV, confirmed it. He was seen walking through his apartment building, driving around in his car. He'd popped by his lawyer's office, and they said, yeah, Doug was here. The search then began. It was weird. I mean, numero uno persona was about 11 hours away, apparently. She vanished at a strange time. It looked like she'd just gone out to check the mailbox, and then nothing. There were signs of a struggle, but no screams or anything. Just a... Weird scenario, to be honest. Again, Douglas Stewart is considered a person of interest in this case. Officers located him in the Virginia town where he lives days after the disappearance and say that his alibi is solid. And he also says that he hopes his wife is found safely. I don't know. I pray for my children every night. I pray for their mother. And I, I pray for the McComb family that they, uh, they get some truth on this. And... And we can figure out where Venus is. And uh, now that the timeline has gone so far, yeah, I'm getting very worried and very concerned. I still care about her very much. And uh, and to be told that uh, that you could be involved in something of this nature is it's uh, it's repulsive. They started looking at other dangers. A mysterious mustachioed madman on the loose was a possibility. Now police are looking for this man. Two witnesses spotted him at nearby Adams Lake the night before Stewart disappeared. He was wet and approached the witnesses for a cigarette. 
I mean, right now with this case, we have so few clues to go on, we're, we're not going to discount anything. But the possibility they were focusing on was the one we all would be focusing on, the ex, soon to be ex-husband. They searched his place in Virginia, they interviewed him, seized his computers, checked his bank account transactions, his truck, they had a goo. Nothing. Except, except for a receipt they found in a back seat. His car was a fucking pigsty. And the receipt was for shovel, gloves, tarp, and a hat. And it was from a Walmart, not in Virginia, but in Ohio, about two hours from Colon Township. Bought the day before she disappeared. He was still in Newport, Newport though. Or was he? I mean, people said that he was there. They saw him. He was there. He'd walked in. The receptionist and said, yes, he came in. We talked to him. He paid uh, money. They had, you know, a uh, bank transfer for, for child custody stuff. It's like he was here. This was such a weird kink. Come on, dog. Where is she? Where's yeah, Venus? Dog. Come on, dog. Hey. Yeah, you're a disgrace to the Marines, buddy. Yes, you are. Sure. Sneers and jabs from a riled up crowd tonight. Their anger directed at Doug Stewart, the only person of interest in his wife Venus's disappearance. Stewart in court today for a custody hearing. And in the meantime, Doug wanted his girls back. He was telling everybody that Venus, she had done a legger. She was off. She had run out of him in Newport News and now she was off again. Around this time, Venus's dad found her journal. And the marriage was worse than they thought. Tensions mounting as a note left behind by Venus Stewart is discovered in her home, that paper containing disturbing details of abuse. Her father gave 24-hour News 8 a copy of handwritten notes detailing allegations of molestation against Doug Stewart, Venus's estranged husband, involving one of their daughters. Those allegations also detailed in a police report from Schoolcraft Police, an investigation launched in February 2010 when one of the Stewart children claimed their father had the child touch him inappropriately. So, maybe somebody covering for Doug? Or was he in cahoots? The workers at the law office were re-interviewed by the police again. They were like, can you just a bit more detail about who came in? Let's say if it wasn't Doug, you know, who was it? How would you describe him? In detail. And they said, yeah, a guy came in. He looked like Doug. You know, he had a hat on. His hood was up. He had shades on. He looked pretty cool. Was it this guy? Yeah, it could have been him. Police are pretty sure it wasn't Doug that came in. So who was it? They looked into Doug's phone records. And what they found was that he had been having quite a few heart-to-hearts but a phone located in Delaware. A phone owned by a guy named Ricky Spencer. Ricky was a kid in college living at home with his parents. Not a ruffian at all. So how did this link? What did he have to do with Doug? What was their relationship? Well, they thought they'd ask. Fucking What the hell is with your voice? Your mom's voice! God. Sounds like you just deep-throated a cow. Yeah, I deep-throated your mom. How do you know Doug Stewart? Through Xbox Live. Through Xbox Live. Seemed that Doug still had his love of gaming. You know, he'd crack on a few matches with the lads. And that's how Doug and Ricky met on Xbox Live. They had known each other for about nine months, and they met in person, in fact, on the 1st of April, 2010. Doug then began to, slowly but surely, introduce the idea to Ricky that Venus, his soon-to-be ex-wife, was dangerous. She was a danger to their children. She was a crazy person, and that he needed to save his kids. The courts had already denied him custody, he said, so he needed to go above the law, and he needed someone to cover for him. We're about the same body size, right? Searching Ricky's phone history, it had mysteriously been off all of April 26th. Except for one moment when it pinged near Doug's apartment. They eventually cracked this kid without too much difficulty at all. Free to leave any time, okay? We just, uh, we know you got some info that can help us out with something we're working on, alright? All right. Somebody was down there portraying themselves to be Doug. Mm -hmm. during, or, uh, Doug during this time that he was up in Michigan. Doug wanted somebody to be down there to pretend like he was him while he was up in Michigan, obviously, to create an alibi. So 
there's kind of two, two types of scenarios that we're looking at here, and this is why we kind of need your help, okay, Ricky? I think it was more him, and you just kind of got caught up in something you realized after the fact, well, this is way over my head. I don't want any part of doing this anymore. Wait, me helping him? <clears throat> right. I don't think you helped him in this. I didn't do anything. Did he tell you he was going to kill her before this happened, before you went down there? Did he ever tell you that? Or a doctor? Did he say anything about that? He didn't take care of business up in Michigan. Okay. When you got there, when you went there on the 25th, uh, you knew he was going to head up there at that point to do whatever he was going to do, correct? Mm -hmm. And finish her off, how you put it? If, if he was going to finish her off or maybe he like, decided, I can't do this, I'm just going to hide her away. What did, he, what did he say he was going to do when you met with him there on the 25th to get the phones and everything? To get and, rid of her. Okay. Did he say get rid of her? What's the exact terms he used? Mm -hmm. Just like, I'm just going to get rid of her. Like, I'm mostly positive. That's what he said. Like, and what did you take that to be? That he was going to do what? Probably finish her off. And that was it, really. Doug was arrested. Police believed she had been murdered, and Doug was charged with that murder. Now behind bars for nearly 48 hours, Doug Stewart arrested for the murder of his wife, Venus. Venus disappeared nearly two months ago from her parents' Colon Township home. Today, 20 he went on trial a year later. Certainly, uh, it's much easier to try a homicide case with, with a body. Um, however, I believe that uh, the investigation um, has given us enough uh, to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he is, in fact, the person and that she, she is, in fact, deceased. He pled not guilty. On the 25th of April, Doug walked into Walmart, about two hours from where Venus lived, and picked up a few bits and bobs, you know yourself. He also bought a disposable phone, which, because he bought using his credit card, was able to be traced. And it told a story that I think we all know. Finally, the fingerprint found on the packaging outside Venus's home, it was Doug's. Ricky Spencer would take the stand. How do you know Mr. Stewart? Um, I met him on Xbox Live, December of 08. How often did you play Xbox Live with Mr. Stewart? Uh, anywhere from 6 to 10 hours. A day? Yeah, on a uh, daily basis. Would you say he was your best friend? Oh, uh, yes. He called us uh, brothers from another mother. Would you? I... Brothers from another mother. Essentially, they would play together all the time. They would become best buds, you know, for months and months and months until they met up in person on the 1st of April. They went to Bush Gardens. Doug seduced Ricky Whip Budweiser. And he would tell Ricky, listen, my soon-to-be ex-wife, she's a real bitch. She abuses the kids, she's horrible. I need to save my children, brother. He was telling me that he was gonna go kill his wife. When he was telling you this, what were you thinking? I was just shocked. I couldn't like, believe what I was hearing. Okay. He said, this is where I want you to come in, Ricky. I want you to be my alibi. Just pretend to be me and live in my apartment. And he uh, jumped out and he said that there was a scream, she screamed once, and that she tried putting up a fight, but he was able to, uh, to get in that uh, headlock and Uh, a drop of blood came from her nose, and uh, that was it. Um, I asked him if it was worth it, and he said it was to uh, protect his kids and give them some type of future. And uh, he told me that. Uh, he told me that. Uh, he was going to call me later because he was going to go, uh, uh, to barrier. He gave Ricky an itinerary for the day. 
so he would be him. And he told Ricky he would choke Venus using his military experience. Ricky used Doug's credit card to buy stuff so it would look like Doug was still in Newport. He wore Doug's clothes. He drove Doug's car. And that was that. The clerk will read the verdict. Members of the jury find Douglas Harry Stewart as to count one guilty of first degree premeditated murder. Doug Stewart was sentenced to life in prison without parole, though he continued to protest his innocence. Ricky pled guilty to conspiracy to commit manslaughter and got a year due to his cooperation. But they still had no Venus. Her family and friends continued to hunt for her remains in the woods surrounding Colon Township, searching through the lakes trying to find anything that would lead them to her. And they found jack shit. At one point, Doug's parents, they began tearing down missing posters for Venus, as they believed their son innocent. Why are you taking those down? Give them back to me. Give them, you. give oh, them I back. I wanted to tell you, we saw Doug. He's doing great. Murdering. He's better in his life. Oh, in prison? It's just good for him, huh? I'm really sorry about what's happening with the posters, and he hopes you find her. Oh, that was good. He did. He said he hopes you find her. And you know what? He said you should actually be putting the pressure on Ricky if you want to find anything. Sit here. They got to take this one down yet? They didn't think Venus was dead. They believed their son, that she had run away, and they didn't think he was capable of killing her. In their opinion, if anything did happen to Venus, the person to talk to would be Ricky Spencer. You know, uh, the kid who broke down on the stand. Why don't you just give me those back? Why are you taking those posters down of Venus? Why don't you listen to the letter that was sent out? If you want to know more about this, you need to go talk to Ricky. Rick, Rick, Ricky's the one you need to talk you to. Oh, well, Mr. Those? Stewart, please. No, you put up all these nasty signs. Well, they're not nasty. Yeah, we want to find if, Venus. When you put up the signs of... For your granddaughters. When you put up the signs of the pictures of Venus, we left them up for months and months and months. That's we have now you put up signs about murderous and no, stuff like that. Mr. Stewart, Doug was convicted. Hey, just I'm go not, ahead. I'm put them up. Mr. We'll take Stewart, them down. Doug was convicted. We, no, we did. We went down and we talked. He was convicted. No. We don't want to fight with you. If you would put up a couple of those. We will not fight with you. Yeah. Months would go by, years, pleading with Doug to tell him. Nothing, nada. He just was not interested. But it's so thick right now. Uh, we could we could go over the graveside and not know it. So, uh, so that's the problem we have also. More and more time went by. Doug was constantly being asked wouldn't say anything. He would appeal until he had no more appeals left in him. In 2018, they went back to him one more time. The police asked him to tell them where she was buried. He said he would. But I got stuff I need. You know, if, you know, if I knew where she was. Of course. Top of the list. An Xbox. It's like coming full circle, all around, all an X. What do you think right here? Because I put a bunch of fallen stumps right here. In that tree. It's either there or there. Okay. 30 to 35 feet in from the edge. Stopped about maybe 50 feet from the edge. And I walked right in through here. And everything, there was so many stumps, tree and debris. Like where she's standing, there was so much debris that Could it be right this was the open spot. And of course, I'm always going to second guess myself. It's right. eight years, but I'm about 90% right here. <coughs> because as you, as you look back here, when you come back, you see there's kind of a weird trail coming back here to begin yeah. with. There's kind mm -hmm. of a partially broken trail. Yeah. And when I got back here, I was like, man, this is way too much. There's way too much rocks over there. There's no way. And then when I looked over here, there's so much foliage. There's no way. And right in between it was a random open spot. He did, finally, eight years after, take them to Venus. All for an Xbox. He told them that morning he drove up, parked outside, he called her. She came out and he knocked her out, putting her in his car. He then drove to the woods. And when she woke up, he stabbed her to death. It was all for the kids. He then buried her out in the woods. 
Venus finally went home. I couldn't handle it. It got to the point where I thought I was, I was never gonna see my children again. I was, I was gonna lose them. And uh, I just couldn't see another way out. I assume that you regret this. Oh, more than you could ever know. This was single-handedly the worst thing that I could and will ever do in my entire life. Um, there wasn't more than one second passed from the time in which I committed the crime that I did not regret it. A twisted uh, plot, plan, you know, let's bring up from video games. I mean, Ricky, come on, this is like basic shit. Probably you just want to, you know, um, be a bit more careful about who you talk to online. It's like 101. To answer the question I posed at the beginning of the video, I think, uh, well, we know we know the answer to what uh, old Doug, Dougie Slew, would do for an Xbox. Give a heartbroken family some closure for an Xbox. And he still demanded too high a price. As we wrap this one up, I think the main takeaway we can tell from this old one is that, you know, it's better just to yap away, continue verbally abusing each other when you're playing online video games. You know, talking about uh, each other's mothers and so on and so forth. Because it's better to stay talking about that because it can get a lot worse. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate you uh, taking the time. Here, listen, go on. I'll see you as always real soon in the next one. Till then, take care of yourselves. I love you. Mike out.